M Travel 2 from Motion VFX is a great way to showcase your travel videos and more. After purchase and installation, you can find M Travel 2 in Final Cut Pro Title Templates tab. Navigate to M Travel 2 to find your different templates. Inside the package, you'll find several animated backgrounds for your projects, all customizable to fit your style. Included are several compositions, perfect for that world traveler. Choose from different maps, postcards, openers, and more. Need to highlight something special? Check out these drag and drop animated icons. With several different overlays and typography presets, there's no limit to what you can make. Let's check them out. To use any of the presets in M Travel 2, just select them and drag and drop it onto your project. To make changes to your template, select it in the timeline and use the on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Double-click the text and type right onto the canvas. Like many other title templates, for more control, click and open the inspector. Inside the inspector, you'll find many of the same controls, along with several other ones, including font, color, and more. For this specific template, I have controls to change the circle background on or off, along with the scale, the wave width, and colors. At the bottom of this title template's controls, I have additional controls for the shadow. Let's add an overlay to give this a little bit more design. I'll drag and drop it right onto my project. Each and every template has its own set of unique parameter controls. Depending on the template, there may be different controls. Be sure to check them all. In the lighting effects overlay, you can choose between the colorization type and how it's mixed. That's a little strong for me, so I'll turn it down. What's really great about these overlays is you can choose several of them and keep stacking them, like with these lines. It's easy to make replacements. Just click and drag what you like to replace and place it onto the replacement clip. Using just a few of the templates, we've now created a whole opener. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at using the calendar and the topography presets. Just like before, I'll drag and drop it onto my timeline. To shorten it, I'll just drag the end. Just like before, I have my on-screen controls that I can change my position, rotation, and scale. Unique to the calendar are these extra on-screen controls that let me specify the duration and these different highlights. You'll notice I've got my Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but my calendar starts on a Thursday. What if I need to change that? I'll head to the inspector and go to the Days Arrange set, and there I can specify what day of the week the month starts. I can also change the number of days in the month. Now that I've changed this to February, I've got this one icon here that's not really doing anything, and I don't need it. So I can go to my inspector and turn it off. If I want just my highlights, I can turn off that range selection by clicking this checkbox. I'll leave it on for now though, and let's change this name of the month, along with a few of the other settings. It's not really important exactly what I'm doing right now, just want you to be aware that you can change all these different settings to fit your specific needs. For my particular trip, I want to change the way that that range is set up. So I think I'll change the color here and just change a couple of these highlights. They're not really standing out, so I'm going to choose them in the inspector and just change their colors a bit. The customizable calendar graphic is great, but I'd like to add a little bit more animation to this. So I'll use these animated icons and place them onto my scene, trim them down, and then I'll use the on-screen controls to place them on those specific days. That way I can share with people when I'm taking different modes of transportation or doing different events. I think I'll go to the beach on Thursday. I'll just start my comp and let's check that out.
So far we've created an opener and a calendar. Let's take a look at another example and create an animated map. Just like every other time, I'll click and drag it onto my project. Scrubbing through my timeline, I'll use the on-screen controls. I can see it's a little tough to grab, so I'll use the magnification controls just to get a little better grip on this. And I can change that back. There may look like there's a lot of points on here, but what's great about this is we can change the number of them by changing the segment number. I think I'll change this to four. That's a little bit more manageable for my trip. You'll notice it's not reaching my arrival point, and that's because I need to move my points to make sure that they're there. And I'll just maneuver these different points around, and it really is as easy as just grabbing them and moving them where you'd like them to be. It'll animate and fill that line as it plays back. You'll notice that I have this curved line here, and I can change that by changing the route line mode. We can change this to a bezier or a linear curve. I'll make this linear for now. We can go even further with our customization with the line joints, color, opacity, thickness, and so on. Now that's great and all, but I'm not really driving across the road like that, and I wanna use my own map. So I'm gonna to go to my media browser, and I've got this map of Wisconsin here that I wanna use. And so I'm gonna click on my title, and we're gonna to go to the drop zone, and I've clicked on that, and I'm gonna use my map of Milwaukee here, and I'll click apply clip. In my inspector control, I can use the map inside scale, and that lets me resize my map. Now I'm going a little big right now, just to show that we can, and I'm just gonna reset my points. And to do that, I'm just grabbing these on-screen controls and moving them. Just to clean this up, I'll uh, drag the duration a little shorter, and let's play that back. Makes a little bit more sense. Before we move on, let's take a look at these backgrounds. I can use one of these backgrounds underneath my animated map to create a animated style graphic for this map. And just like all the other templates, we can change things so I can take out this moon and make the sky a little sunnier, uh, add a little bit more green fog, which is very, very common here in Milwaukee. And let's play that back. This is great when you don't have a lot of footage, if you need an interstitial or even a placeholder. Let's take a look at the travel map. It's a great way to show a departure place and an arrival place across the entire planet. I'm just extending it out, and let's go ahead and play this back to see what this looks like. That looks good, but let's go ahead and customize it. I'll click on it, and let's go ahead and change some of these colors right away. You'll notice that we have different land colors. I really like that because it kind of gives this elevation look to things. And we can further customize this by changing like the line color, the width, and even the element length and width. Now something you're gonna see in some of these is under the settings, you'll have a final effect and a set location. With setting location, it gives you a world map that you can easily just pick your points on the map on where the beginning and end animation are gonna take place. Let's check that out. Right away, I can see I'm gonna to wanna to adjust those points ever so slightly. And here's a little tip. If you hold on to Alt, where you change your position values, it will slow down how fast that parameter will change by a factor of 10. So if you scrub normally, it's gonna scrub pretty quick, but holding on to Alt is gonna let you fine tune that. And I'll just change the position of that arrival and I'll change that icon from that purple to a bit of a yellow. Now we all know that I'm gonna be flying from one place to another, but we can actually swap out that airplane with different icons. We can make it an arrow or even a drop zone. And just like we've used the drop zones before, I'm gonna click on my drop zone, go to my media, I'm gonna pick this handsome lad. Now due to drop zone positioning, I'm just gonna click on my template and we're just going to adjust that drop zone and change the rotation. And let's go ahead and scale the interior of that and a little bit of a pan. Play that back and you can see I am leaving here from Milwaukee 
I am traveling all the way to the other side of the planet, and after a very long flight, that is where I arrive. Let's take a look at one last example. With the country template, it's really easy to show clips or pictures of what you love most about a specific country. Just like before, we can adjust the scale and parameters and even add clips to a drop zone. Let's play that back and see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good for the rolling hills of Wisconsin, but what about other countries? In the inspector, going to the country shape gives you tons of different countries to choose from. And changing is just as easy as clicking and picking in alphabetical order. Let's take a look at Indonesia here. And what I want to do is I want to change the country color of Indonesia. But you'll notice nothing's happening. And that's because I need to turn off the drop zone. Now, as soon as I turn that off, I can change the country color and we can change the side color, should we choose. Every time I've seen Indonesia, it's always been very green. So I'm gonna stick with that. I'll make a couple more final adjustments and let's play that back. With all these different templates, the world is yours. My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta and this has been M-Travel 2, only from Motion VFX.